Australia, New Zealand. Thank you. Now, my guest seems like such an unassuming, nice, quiet guy, but he's causing an international stir. His name, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Are you familiar with all, all the talk that's been, been going on uh, about the blood moons and, and, and the uh, tetrarchs and, and the Shemitah uh, and the harbinger? Who would have ever thought? Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, my friend from New York. <laughs> Who would have ever thought you'd cause such a stir? Mm. <laughs> what can I do, Sid? I, you know, <clears throat> the Lord called. We've known each other for like 30 years, but the Lord just did it. You know, it's all the Lord. All the Lord. Well, uh, you, first of all, your last name is Khan, mm -hmm. and I know mm -hmm. that someone whose last name is Cohen, Khan, or the derivatives of that goes back to the ancient priests of Israel, uh, they're called the, Co uh, the Kohans, Kohans, uh, Kohanim. Mm -hmm. uh, now, but you know that. Mm -hmm. I know that. <laughs> How did that woman in Israel that didn't even know the Messiah know that? Tell me. <laughs> I, was, <clears throat> I was in Israel for one of the first times in my life, and we're in Jerusalem, and it's a place which has the models of the temple. And there was an Orthodox Jewish woman who is telling everybody about the temple. And there's a crowd of people. I was a face in the crowd. She turns to me across the room and says, are you a Kohen? And everybody looked at each other like, how do you, how do we, you're a priest. I said, well, yes. She said, well, I thought she said, how do you know that? I said, well, my name, Khan, means priest. She said, no, no, no. How did I know that? I said, I said, we all looked at each other. At the end, I went up to her. I said, does this happen all the time? Do you do this? You know, and she's <laughs> Orthodox. And she says, she says, you wanted to know if I was a believer in Jesus. And when I told her I was, in effect, she, she walked away and she said, I'm very upset and walked away because she, she had to make sense of the fact that something came upon her identifying a follower of Jesus as a priest. That means if Jesus had to be the Messiah. So it never, and then, and then, year, then years later, I'm in Jerusalem. Somebody takes me underground to a, an ancient house of the the priest in the time of Messiah, and the priest dwelt in that quarter. And I walk outside and I look, and it was right under the place where she gave me that prophetic word, where the priest dwelt. The Lord brought me home. It's our destiny. You know, so, so you know, in the in the Bible, it says that in the days of the temple, the the priests began their ministry when they were 20 years old, 20th birthday. I had no idea until just recently. I came to the Lord on my 20th birthday. <laughs> it's the exact thing, but God has our whole life in his hand. Uh, speaking of our whole life in his hand, what is a nice Jewish guy <laughs> okay. going to India? What do we do? Why did you go to India? I was invited to go to India because the, the tradition of all Indian Christians are that the gospel came to them through a Jewish, a Messianic Jew named Thomas, the apostle. So they said, you must come and walk in the footsteps of Thomas. It was the most dangerous thing I ever did in my life if it wasn't for well, well, God. Why? Yeah. why is that dangerous? Because it was at a time of a radical Hindu government. Christians were being killed, and I was put in the place of walking in the footsteps of the one who brought the gospel to them. So I was a lightning rod. So the Hindus were not happy. They were not happy, not happy Hindus. And, and, we, and they had me at the end go up the mountain where Thomas was killed by tradition. I bet. And I'm going up that mountain, you know, and, and a guy meets me, an Indian guy meets me. He says, I have to tell you, he says, I was on this mountain. Him, and he says, God spoke, the Spirit spoke to me and said, said, there's a curse on India. The Jewish blood was spilled here. The gospel was rejected. And he, God told me months ago, a Jewish man must come to this mountain and walk up to the top and not get killed. And so I said, whoa, and he said, he said, he said for the curse to rain. So, and he, he was going all around the city telling them and having and no idea. And not get killed. Well, are you figuring this out, your lightning mind? <laughs> well, <laughs> well you just... I, I, in India, I was just saying, Lord, give me another half day to live. You know, and, that, and, that, and, that, and that's it, really. I was living my half day because the most dangerous thing, but God kept giving the scripture, do not fear, my right hand will protect you. And that's why I'm here today. You know, and that, and that led to other things, Cuba after that. Cuba? Yeah, Cuba. Well, Fidel Castro, he, he said, I'm going to open up the island to show the world there's religious freedom. Well, I was asked to go to Cuba and, and sound the shofar to open up this, this month of, of freedom. Uh, but the thing is that when I'm there, a guy comes off the street and he says, I have to talk to the Jewish guy. And, and he, says, he says, well, about a week ago, the, the believers of Cuba, we went on the high places, the mountains, and God said there's a curse on Cuba, and it's linked to, linked to the Jewish people, what it, we did. Isn't, you know, isn't this amazing? <laughs> yeah. There are curses in the nations linked to the Jewish people, just yes. as yes. there are blessings in the nations 
linked to the Jewish people. That's Genesis 12, 3. God promises, I, God, will bless those who bless the Jewish people. I, God, will curse those who curse. So tell me Abs about the curse and kill. Absolutely. And they said this got to turn. They said a Jewish person has to come here, Jew and it has to turn from a curse to a blessing. Now, I said, this is sounding really familiar. He said, and then there's a mountain up there, and it's a cursed mountain. They, they sacrifice. It's Santeria, voodoo, and it's cursed. But God told us that the curse is going to turn into a blessing. It's going to come down the mountain. I said, well, this is weird. God keeps calling me up these cursed mountains, you know. So, so I said, okay, I guess we're going. So I lead everybody up. We go up to the top of the mountain. There's a pavilion where the idols and the gods are, and there's a man standing in front of it. And from a distance, he sees me, and he says, hola, Jonathan. And I'm thinking, like, that, I don't know Spanish, but that sounds like hello, Jonathan, but I don't know the guy. Again, he says, hola, Jonathan. Then he comes over to me. He says, I've been waiting for you. I said, waiting for me? You know, he, he says, he's, he's, he, he's carrying in his hand a ceramic plate. On the ceramic plate is a painting of me sounding the shofar. Now, I brought a shofar up to that mountain to, show, to blow it. It's a, he says, I've been waiting. And, you know, he says, no, I'm a believer. He says, God told me to paint this painting, go up the mountain, and you would come. So I come up there, and, but he says, but that's not it. This oh, is Cuba. This is Cuba. How do they even know? And, 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 and not only, and, and the, the, he says, but there's more to it. And he shows the, 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 the plate is chipped. And he says, what happened is when I painted it, Lord led me to put it in the pavilion with all the idols and the gods. But that night, something happened. They closed it up. The, the leather ripped itself apart. It came down and struck the head of the chief god of Cuba. On the head, the idol called Ochun. In the morning, the worshipers, the voodoo worshippers, they open up the, their temple. They find their chief god on the floor with her crown removed. We got a picture of it, crown removed. And next to it, this picture of this Jewish guy, this nice Jewish guy, <laughs> with a shofar. And it was where the, the shofar is what struck her head. And then later... He a, struck her head with a shofar? Her, I didn't, but the plate did. Okay. <laughs> with me. I take them. But, but so, so the thing is that, so then, then a few... Of course, I know you have a shofar. You're going to blow shortly. I, and I, I was am. Just gonna... I am, but I will not strike you on the head. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, so, so, I, so a few months later, a pastor from, from Cuba comes to our congregation. He says, there's a revival in the city, the city of, of, of the Orient is there. There's a, there. What happened is that it says people are coming from all over and they're going to their churches and they're bringing their idols and they're telling the pastors, smash the idols. We heard what happened on the mountain. Wow. <laughs> so I God love that. It. I love it. But Good. Jonathan, give me a, a kind of a, an, an update on the harbinger. Everyone was looking yeah. For, yeah. for a disaster yeah. to happen on a yeah. specific uh -huh. day. Mm -hmm. Sure. But explain that. Talk yeah, well, to first that. Yeah, well, and you know me, I've always warned against do not put God in a box. God doesn't yeah. have to do anything. Uh, by the way, uh, although he is radical in the supernatural, he's the most conservative radical in the supernatural I've ever met. Is that a fair <laughs> statement? I guess. <laughs> he has no choice I'll, I'll, give, I'll, TV. I'll, I'll give you a cautious, a cautious yes. <laughs> a conservative yes. You see? Well, I'm bold, yeah. But yeah, well, I want things to be right. Well, here's the thing. First of all, the, the template of the harbinger has continued. America has not, as a culture, turned back to God. Remember what happened to ancient Israel. They were warned and they moved, they continue to move away. Well, we've been accelerating as a nation, as a culture. It's been following that template. In fact, there are things I won't go into that are in the harbinger years ago that are coming true in this election, but I will not go through that. But we'll say a, f a few things. Um, one of the things is that, for instance, the Shemitah, one of the things that it absolutely happened, what happened is the Shemitah of 2015 was the worst year in the stock market since the Shemitah of 2000. And 2008, the worst year mm. in seven years. It was the it caused the markets to crash all over. And actually, in the month of Elul, it caused a global collapse. Still here now, it, oil to collapse. Everyone collapse. was looking in the U.S., but this was a, all for the over. Whole world. China collapsed, stock market collapse, all over. And and actually, it was the worst year to make money in 78 years since the Great Depression. And not only that, it was 20 percent of the greatest day crashes in history happened during the Shemitah and during the month of Elul. And not only that, I mean, there's so much, but not that, but the, the actual, the American age that began in 1871 when America became the strongest economic power on earth, the Shemitah of 2015 ended the American age. America was dethroned. It is no longer the strongest economic power. It is now China. So there was mm -hmm. much, much, much that did happen. Tell, God didn't have to do anything, but it happened. I want you to set the scene for 
the mystery. Yes. The desert, the yes. teacher. Explain. The mysteries, which we're going to get into. Yeah. The mysteries, but yeah, it begins with a, a, a man traveling in the desert. He meets a man called the teacher, and the teacher takes him on a one year odyssey around mountaintops, caves, secret chambers, you know, um, all sort of desert dwellers. And every day he opens a mystery, uh, some of the greatest mysteries of God. He opens up the, a mystery for every day. So, so it's an odyssey, and yet the one who sees this is really taken on that odyssey. And every day there are, you know, if the harbinger was a mystery, the, the mystery, this is hundreds of mysteries. And really, the, really, I would say, the, really the, the, the greatest mysteries of the ages of God, you know, of prophecy, of of. But, of but you know what I like about these mysteries? We're coming into such tough times That's it. That's in it. the world. What if these mysteries could unlock peace in you? Could unlock joy in you? Could unlock purpose and destiny in you? You, uh, you know, you start out with the mystery of the jar. <clears throat> yeah, this, that. this is really the this is really an, an opening. It's to open because this is for believers, unbelievers. It doesn't matter. It's just an opening. That is this. The the teacher comes to the disciple and and say, and carry a jar and says, pose the questions. Is it possible for something that is small to contain something that is large? And the he says, no, it's not possible. Yeah. And he says, yes, it is. This cup can this cup can. If the vessel is open, it can contain everything. It's unlimited. This jar can contain a river. If it, you put it in the river, it can flow right through it. How can you contain God? God? The Bible says, Paul says, I pray that you, you would have the fullness of God. How can you be filled up with the fullness of God? An open vessel, an open life, an open mind, an open heart will be filled by God continuously. It, there's no limitations on that life. Well, so why do we humans close down and say, I haven't seen that, so that can't be God. Because as if we've seen everything. Yeah, that yeah. would make us God. Exactly. I mean, yeah, <laughs> think about it. Think about it. I mean, which is bigger, what we know or what we don't know? I mean, and, and think about, you know, we with all that we know, we don't know that we don't know the, the little finger of God yet. There's so much more. Paul, if Paul could write that I might know him, and he wrote most of the books of the New Testament. He says that I might know. Well, we we have to never stop seeking. That's what the mysteries are. There's no end to the revelations of God. There's no end to the awesomeness of God. We just have to not get tired. We have to keep seeking him and we'll find. Tell me about the kneeling God, the mystery of the, I mean, this is quite a mystery, the <laughs> mystery of the kneeling God. Yeah, and that is, this is, in the Bible, the word for blessing is barucha, barucha taranai, or baracha. Well, that word for blessing, people don't realize in the Hebrew, it actually means to kneel. In order to bless, you must kneel. You're saying like you're blessing God. But, but, what if God was to bless us? What, and that's what salvation is all about. What if God's going to bless us? Then God has to kneel. God came down to earth, he kneeled, he, sub he humbled himself, he kneeled before death, he kneeled before this world, he kneeled before hatred, he submitted himself completely that he might give us the blessing. In order to bless, he must do that, that we might kneel and bless him before the kneeling God. We have the humble God. To bless, he had to humble himself. Well, you know, these, these are things that people have never even pondered. Tell me the, the mystery <laughs> of the... Shmicha. Shmicha. Yeah, not Shmita, Shmicha. Perfect. Yeah, this is something that, mo and th th here's the thing, a lot of these things in the mysteries have never, have never been, as far as we know, have never been said before. And this is something you wouldn't know unless, unless you, you were back there. But here's the thing. Before a sacrifice could be lifted up, before, there was a, something that had to happen called the smicha. And here's the thing. The priests of Israel had to lay their hands, their palms, on the head of the sacrifice. By doing it, they would place the sins on that sacrifice. They would identify the sacrifice becomes as them, and then could be offered up. Now, here's the thing. If Messiah is the sacrifice, then, then this thing must have been performed. Well, was it? Here's the thing. Messiah was taken to the Sanhedrin. Why? We ever think about that? Because they were the priests. So the, the priests have to deliver the sacrifice over, number one. Secondly, what did they do? After they pronounced judgment, what did they do? It says they all, they hit him on his head, his mm -hmm. face. It said, in the Greek, it says hit the palms of their hands. They were performing the smicha. And so they were, they were doing, they had to do it. So they did it. And plus, but there was, you had to confess your sin. So where was the sin? The high priest, remember what he said? He said, this man is guilty of blasphemy. 
The smicha says that wasn't, that wasn't his sin. That was the high priest's sin. That was the sin of the priesthood. That was the sin of Israel. That was the sin of the world. That was man's sin. So he's pronouncing on the sacrifice the confession of sin onto Messiah, the sin of man, blasphemy. And when you get saved, when anybody gets saved, you perform the smicha. You are reaching out to him across time and saying, you, you confess your sins over him. You touch your life to his life and you're set free. And when Messiah was then lifted up, note what happened on Yom Kippur. You had two goats, two, the high priest and two goats. And one goat became the scapegoat, escapes. The other goat becomes the, the sacrifice. And, and according to the ancient rabbinical writings, the two goats had to be identical. They had to look identical. Well, let me just tell you, what happened before Messiah was offered up? Mystery. The, they stood before the crowds, that's what they did, with not two goats, but two men. You had Messiah and you had Barabbas. They were the two goats. And the thing at Barabbas, criminal, that's, uh, that's, us, that's us. But remember, identical. The name Barabbas, you wouldn't know this unless you went to Hebrew. It's really a Hebrew name. It's Bar Abba. Jesus is the son of the father. Barabbas means the son of the father. You know, <laughs> it's all there. God is so magnificent. Every little word has meaning. And when you understand these mysteries, you will walk in joy. You will walk in peace. You will walk in blessing. Wait till you hear the mystery of the ancient rabbis that conclusively prove yeah. Jesus is the Messiah of the Jews and the whole world. We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Imagine if you discovered a treasure chest in which were hidden ancient mysteries, revelations from heaven, secrets of the ages, the answers to man's most enduring age-old questions, and the hidden keys that can transform your life to joy, success, and blessing. Jonathan Kahn has been given new heavenly keys, which will take you on a year-long journey of a day-by-day -day discovery of things few people have ever heard, the most important keys of spiritual truth, end-time revelation, and the secrets of overcoming, things that will help you experience the reality of God in your life every day. Call right now to get Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's exclusive offer, which includes his brand new book, The Book of Mysteries. Plus, receive his five-part audio CD set, The Album of Mysteries, exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $49. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9439. As you open up the Book of Mysteries, you will be transported on a journey through a desert to encounter a man known only as the Teacher, who will take you on an odyssey to mountaintops, caverns, encampments of tent dwellers, and oil-lit chambers of scrolls, ancient books, and mysterious vessels to open the mysteries of the age and your life. Each day, you will get a powerful divine revelation, a special mission that takes the revelation and applies it to your life, scripture references that help you meditate on and apply each of the 365 daily nuggets of life-changing revelation and activate them in your life and so much more. Governor Mike Huckabee says, I was absolutely stunned. Pat Robertson said, the book is extraordinary. Sid Roth says, most of us only get one nugget while hearing an entire sermon on a Sunday morning. But Jonathan Kahn in his book gives you 365 one-page nuggets of revelation, one for each day of the year. Now you can begin this journey for yourself. Uncover the mysteries of God, the secrets of the ages, and the hidden keys to open the doors of a life of joy, victory, and success. Plus, when you call, you will also receive his exclusive five-part audio CD set, The Album of Mysteries. It is not available anywhere else. Sid asked Jonathan to expand the teaching on the most life-changing nuggets of revelation contained in his book. In this five-part audio CD teaching, The Album of Mysteries, some of these one page nuggets from the book had to be expanded to reveal the richness of the teaching and the powerful transformation it will bring to your life. Some of the things he covers in this five-part audio CD 
series are The Mystery of the Priesthood, The Transference of the Anointing and Priesthood to Jesus, and now to you. Find out the importance of tapping into Jesus as your High Priest, an advocate who makes the way for your every prayer to be heard and answered by your Heavenly Father. Revelation of the Face of God, which is now accessible, and as you seek His face, you will receive blessings, provision, love, kindness, unlimited mercy, and compassion. Jonathan opens up revelations from the ancient biblical Hebrew wedding, the secret title of God, becoming one with God. Revealed are the supernatural events and encounters that totally transformed Jonathan's life and brought him to his appointed destiny. Jonathan reveals key mysteries on how to know, find, and fulfill the supernatural pattern, calling, purpose, vision, and destiny of your life. Don't miss out on getting Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's exclusive offer, which includes his brand new book, The Book of Mysteries. Plus, receive his five-part audio CD set, The Album of Mysteries, exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $49. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9439. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9439 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I just can't get over how smart God is. I mean, it's, it's kind of dumb for me to even say such a statement, <laughs> but there is such wisdom in every letter of the Bible. I, I, tell me, these ancient yeah. rabbis were much smarter than our modern rabbis. What did they figure out about the Messiah? <clears throat> well, in the mysteries, the teacher takes the disciple into a room with old books, takes out the old books, the Talmud of the Bible, I mean, of, of, of the rabbis. Here's the thing. And by the way, the Talmud is, is the commentaries by the rabbis, which they consider at a higher level than even the scriptures. Which it's not. Which is Meshuggah. Which is Meshuggah. But, but hidden in their writings, in the book of, called Yoma, in that, mm -hmm. the rabbis recorded that all of a sudden strange signs and what supernatural things started happening in the temple of Jerusalem. And particularly, they said the doors of the temple opened by themselves. They would close it. It opened by itself. It says they rebuked the doors, but they opened by themselves. Like, like the You're way... You're saying the doors and... Uh, the, like, the golden what, doors. What year did this happen? Well, here's the thing. They, they give the year, and they, they say it happened 40 year, about 40 years before the destruction of the temple. 70 A.D., the temple was destroyed, minus 40 equals just about 30 A.D., the time of Messiah on the cross. And so when Messiah's on the cross, the rabbis are recording that all these supernatural cosmic changes took place in the temple. Hmm. I mean, and in fact, in one of the books called Sanhedrin, of all things, they actually put, they give the timing when Messiah had to come by, and it comes out to thir about 30 AD. It's all, this is in the rabbinic writings. There is nothing like this in history. It's actually proving Messiah beyond anything. I mean, it talks about the, the scarlet cord that, that stopped turning white in about 30 AD. Everything changed for the rabbis. Now, there was a cord that if it turned white, God accepted the, the sacrifice. The sacrifice of Yom Kippur, yeah. And but all of a sudden... It, it stopped turning? All of a sudden, Yom Kippur, something cosmic happened to Yom Kippur. When? All right, about the time that Jesus the Messiah, Yeshua, died for our sins. How can we have all those coincidences and call them yeah, coincidences? Yeah, yeah, and it's there. <laughs> and when, you know, when you've got a hostile witness, that's the most powerful witness. I mean, there's nothing like this in history. But that's and there's much more the rabbis did. They didn't know what they were doing, by the way. So they, they had no idea that, that what they were proving. They were proving Jesus yeah. is the Messiah. Yeah. God led the God caused it to happen. Man, would there be more ancient rabbis raised up that understand the writings of the Talmud? Because then every Jew would have peace in their heart and then spread a message of peace to the world because the salvation is of the Jew. And then we'd have peace, then the Messiah could come. How could the Messiah come if everyone wants to kill their neighbor? We have to have first peace in our heart, then Messiah comes for world peace. Makes so much sense. You, know, you need a little help to get mixed up on that. <laughs> okay, uh, Jonathan, the most mysterious day mm. in the Bible. Mm. 
Okay. There is a day in the Bible that God appointed. It is the absolute, absolutely most mystery-filled day of anything. So mysterious, the rabbis don't even know what to do with it. They don't even know what to make of it. <laughs> it is called the gathering of the eighth day. Now, what's the thing? It's the very last appointed day that God gave in the entire holy calendar. What's the thing well, about well, eight? Well, 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 the eighth day. But last time I checked, there's only seven days in a week. Yes, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. But the thing is that that's the whole point. You know, seven, number of completion. That's yeah. it. It's completion. So if it's the end, so if seven's the end, what's eight? It's what happens after the end. It's what happens beyond numbers. It's the, it's the number that, it's the day that breaks the patterns, the day that goes beyond time and space. And all, it's a, you see, when you read the Bible, you go up to Revelation. Revelation, you got sevens and sevens, trumpets, seven, everything's seven, until you get to the last two chapters, you have the eighth day, eternity, heaven. It's all about the mystery of heaven. But think about it too, Sid, that when, actually, well, here's this. What do they do on that eighth day? What they do is, it's a mystical, they roll up all the scrolls and rewind a new one. What, what does it say at the end? It says that everything in the heaven and earth will be rolled up. And then the, the scroll that they open up is, is Genesis. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth. They, wrote, they, they open up another scroll, which is Joshua, which is about crossing the Jordan to the land beyond. That's the day of eternity. And not only that, when did Messiah rise? He, did, he rose on the first day of the week. But the first day of the week is also the eighth day of the week, meaning the power of the eighth day is in, the, is in Messiah, is in the resurrection, to live beyond this world, live beyond our problems, live beyond your limitations. In fact, when do most believers worship? On the Sunday. Sunday's the eighth day. It's also that we are children of the eighth day. Huh. And I'm going to throw another thing in here. In Hebrew, in Hebrew, the word, in what's the symbol of the spirit? It's, it's oil. I mean, one and one of them, right. oil. Oil in Hebrew is the word shemen. Shemen, we, we wouldn't know, shemen is linked to the word eight in Hebrew, literally. Hmm. Why? Because the power to live in the eighth day is in by living in the Holy Spirit. You break the bounds. You break. You go beyond the end. You you go. You go beyond yourself. The power of the eighth day. We can live in in, in the mysteries. It talks about how to live in the eighth day even now. Mm. You know, one of my producers said that her favorite mystery is the mystery of the bride and the groom. Oh, okay. That, I yeah. mean, you could talk on yeah. that for the next 10 hours. Yeah. But. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, one of the most beautiful mysteries, and it's the mystery of the Bible, the mystery of life. It's the mystery of Egypt. And it's this, in a nutshell. The ancient Hebrew marriage holds, the, holds this cosmic revelation. How did it begin? Well, in order for there to be a marriage, the bridegroom always had to make a, a journey from his house to the house of the bride. Always. Then in the house of the bride, he would have to pledge himself. He'd have to give a costly treasure to set her free from her house. And then once they would, they would seal a covenant, drink wine together, cup, then he would go back to his house and he would prepare a home for her. They'd be separated. She'd prepare herself for him. She'd prepare, he'd prepare a home for her. And then the great wedding day would come many, maybe a year later, great procession. The, the, the bridegroom dressed as a bra, as a king uh, with, with his men with torches at night coming to the bride. The bride dressed as a queen. He'd come for her. They'd, she'd take off her veil. They'd see each other face to face. He would then, t they'd be carried away in a great procession from her house to the house of the bridegroom where they would celebrate for seven days. What's the mystery? That's the biggest nutshell I could do. What's the mystery here? God is the bridegroom. We are the bride or everybody watching was born to be the bride. But in order for the mystery to happen, the bridegroom must make the journey. So 2000 years ago, the bridegroom of our souls journeyed from his house, heaven, to our house, earth. He journeyed to our house. He comes to us and no matter where we are, not just earth, no matter where we are, he's the, he's the God who comes to us. He comes to our door. We have to let him in. And then what did he have to do? In the house of the bride, the bridegroom had to, to produce a price, a, a gift, a costly treasure to set. Well, he did. It wasn't, it wasn't silver or gold. The, the price was him, his life. That is the bridal gift to set us free. And then they shared a cup. He shared a cup with us. Then, he, then the bridegroom has to return to his father's house. What do he say? I have to go to my father's house. I will prepare a place for you in my father's house or many match I will come again and so now is the great separation we are the bride he's he's there we're here but we are he, we are to prepare our play our to take the time we have now to prepare ourselves for the marriage we're to become more beautiful we get ready for our eternal home and then one day comes the second visitation when he will come for us whether we are alive on that day or whether the end of our life we're gonna have that he's gonna come one more time for the bride and he will come we will see him then face 
face to face. We will be lifted away with him, the bride and groom, carried on a procession. The old house disappears, the old creation, and we will enter the house of the bridegroom that we have only dreamed about, we've only believed in. We'll see it then, and for the first time in our lives, we will be home. You know, I, I have to just say this. Every Jew understood the Jewish wedding yes. when these things were penned. And I believe a lot of Jewish people that became believers in the Messiah understood these mysteries yeah, yeah. at that time. In fact, Neander, the great uh, uh, Jewish historian, said at the turn of the first century, there were approximately one million Jewish believers in Jesus. Mm. Uh, kind of quickly, yeah. because it's, yeah. but it's so, <laughs> so important, much. the divine pluralities. Okay, you would never see this in your English Bible or your Bible, never. There are so many mysteries that are in the Hebrew, and that is that there are a number of words that you can, in Hebrew, you cannot say singular, only plural. And I'll give you one, one of them. One is the word, you know, we say God has mercy, but in Hebrew, he doesn't have mercy. He has rachamim. Rachamim is not mercy, it's only mercies. He doesn't, in meaning, no matter how, the word for sin, our sins are, is singular, but the word for God's love and mercy is plural. It means that whatever, however much sin we have, there's more mercy and more love to cover it. And I'll just tell you another thing, the word for face, we talk about the face of God. In Hebrew, it's the faces of God. God has many manifestations. Just like many. the names of Yeah, God. like the names of God. And, and you know, and when you, when you talk about, we talk about Jerusalem, you can't say that in Hebrew. Jerusalem, you, whenever you say Jerusalem, you're saying the two Jerusalems. There's always more, there's a heavenly Jerusalem. Yeah, and right. when you get to heaven, all the, plural, I, won't go through, I won't reveal it all, but all the pluralities come together in heaven. And the last thing, Elohim, the word for God is plural, meaning there's no end to God. You can never exhaust him. Whatever you think he is, he's better. Here's <laughs> what I want to find out. With all of his knowledge, with all of his wisdom, I want to find out the mysteries of the end times when we come back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Get ready to hear the most significant historical biblical announcement concerning Israel that will impact America and the entire world. ISN, the It's Supernatural online TV network, along with both WHT, World Harvest, and GEB TV networks, bring you an exclusive It's Supernatural one and a half hour live event. Join Sid Roth and his special guests, John Bevere, Pat Robertson, and Perry Stone on Thursday, September 15th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. John Bevere will unveil what he calls the most impactful teaching that he has ever been given by God. Sid Roth will be sharing the most significant historical biblical announcement of his life and ministry. And if you thought reaching 5,000 unsaved Jewish people with the gospel in two years was big, wait till you hear this. Also, get ready for a special message from Perry Stone and Pat Robertson. Don't miss this one and a half hour live TV event. If you love watching our It's Supernatural TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know, I'm, I'm here with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, and I know a lot of the Hebrew. I know a lot of the mysteries of the Bible. But as he explains these mysteries, I don't know if you could sense what I could right here on the set. But there just was a, a river of the presence of God that go, kept going up, up, up. Let's go back to the beginning. Uh, let's talk about the mysteries of Eden. Yeah, the, it all goes back to there. The and, garden. Yeah, and these are, these are actually revealed, several of them, with a teacher in a garden sharing the beginning. I'll give you a, a one, I'll start with this. You know, we know Jesus, you know, wore, Messiah wore a crown of thorns. Why? Why do you wear a crown of thorns? Because 
the curse at the beginning was, he says, thorns. Or the curse is, is symbolized by the thorns. When he put, they put the crown on him, he became the king of the curse. He became the Lord of the curse, that he has dominion over our, our sins, our Lord of sorrows, all that there. When did he die? He died on Friday. Why Friday? Friday is the sixth day. Man was created on the sixth day, so man must be redeemed on the sixth day. Mm. And, and six hours, six day. Not only that, remember what happened in the, in the fall, Sid, that the, God said, you know, you, you're leaving Eden, and he set up the cherubim with a flaming sword, and right. you cannot go facing east. Well, the cherubim were the symbol of the barrier between God and man. You could not get back, right. you know, with a sword. Well, the, the, what people don't realize is when God set up the tent of meeting, and then later the, the temple, which is all about meeting God, you had these barriers, the veils, the veils, and on the veils, people don't realize, were the cherubim. They were the cherubim as from Eden. They were represented. That, that Eden, that flaming sword, that barrier. So here's the thing. When Messiah died, what happened? The veil was rent in two. That means the cherubim were pushed out of the way. Messiah was entering through the flaming sword, entering through the cherubim, and opening the way for God, uh, for us to go to God. It was the day he undid what the cherubim did. He literally did that. Even that is so perfect. When he said it is finished, it means the way is truly open. And I'll, I'll give you a while, just throw in, there's so many, but throw, throw in this. When Messiah rose from the grave, it was a Hebrew holiday. God did everything on a Hebrew holiday. He followed it. And the Hebrew holiday was called Yom Roshit. Roshit meaning the day of the first fruit. When the first fruit was lifted up, it was a sign that the winter's over, the spring has come, and now, well, Messiah, as they were lifting up those first fruits, Messiah was rising from the dead as the first fruits of new life, saying that the winter is over, the spring has come, and you got all that. There's so much there. But, but, the word is Yom Roshit. The very first Noun in the Bible, is, it says, in the beginning. In Hebrew, the word for beginning is reshit, the same word, the same word. So listen, Messiah rose on the day of the reshit means he rose on the day of Genesis. Because when they, were, when they translated reshit into Greek, it became Genesis. Hmm. So Messiah rises on the day of Genesis. Why? Because it's a new Genesis. It's a new creation. It's a new beginning. Everything before it is nothing. <laughs> he makes it all do. The winter's over. The, they're, 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 I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say. There's so much to say about the end times hidden in the ancient Hebrew yeah. and the biblical feast. But tell me the mysteries of the end okay, times. Okay, I'll touch on a few. There's a lot of them, but I I'll know. touch on just a few. Okay, one is you know we know in the end times there'll be a great falling away, and we know that. But the word in Greek is apostasia. Mm -hmm. but the, now, now it, it means you know, falling away from the faith, but it doesn't just mean that. What people don't realize is the other meaning which holds a whole mystery. The other meaning of apostasia is not just falling away from faith, but to fall away from the state of being. Now, let me tell you what that means here. If we, in other words, if a civilization falls away from faith in God, it falls away from the state of being, meaning man falls away from the state of manhood. Woman falls away from the state of womanhood. Family falls away from the, the state of family. Marriage falls away from the state of marriage. Uh, life, so we are, wit what we are witnessing is how the mystery is going to, we, we, there's no accident that we are witnessing this all around. It's part of the mystery of the end times. But at the same time, I'll, I'll say so. there's something in the, in the mysteries called the chiasma. I won't go into it except to say this. That is God will, the way he will finish the age is the way he began the age. What was in the beginning shall be at the end. That's the way God does it. And so you have Israel in the world to the beginning, you have Israel in the world again. You got Jerusalem, you have Jerusalem back. You have Jewish believers at the beginning, first you have Jewish believers again. What it's saying, you have persecution at the beginning, you will have persecution again, but you have the book of Acts at the beginning, you will have the book of Acts at the end. And so, and so, and so. So you're saying to me, let me see yeah. if I'm hearing you right. Mm -hmm. You're saying when you see uh, men being called women, when you see the institution of marriage destroyed, yes. when you see all of these mm. apostasy, yes. uh, the, yes. the, 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 these things yes. happening, there will be a great move of the Spirit of God equivalent to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at the book of Acts. Is that what I'm hearing you say? <laughs> that is what you're hearing, Sid. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> and, 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 I mean, <laughs> that, you know, people, people think of the end times as only, only evil, but it's not. The, the dark gets darker, but the light has to get brighter. Yeah, and, you know something I see, Jonathan? The Word says that we see in part. We prophesy in part. I have to tell you, 
I only see one part. <laughs> the part I see is the greatest move of God's Spirit in history. I don't even have eyes to see what the devil is <laughs> fooling around with. We're about ready to see. The, the, Jesus made this statement. You will see the same things, the same works that I have done, and even greater. Here's what I believe, Jonathan, are some of the greater. I believe that one day we will take the It's Supernatural cameras right into a hospital, the amputee ward. And I tell you, I see this, I believe it, I, 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 I believe it's almost here. We're going to see someone with an amputated leg, the leg, shoot out. That's what we're going to see. Well, there's a, so there's a Hebrew, there's a Hebrew word, this is the mystery of teshuva, it's teshuva, and it means return. We are at the time around this time of year, it's called the time of teshuva, when you repent, when Jewish people come back to God, yes. Yom Kippur, you, you come back. Well, there's something about that. There's a mystery there, because the teshuva of the Jewish people, the return, doesn't, in the Hebrew year, it doesn't come at the beginning of the year, it comes at the end of the sacred year, the time of Yom Kippur, that's the end of the year. What's that saying? The Jewish people, the teshuva of the age will come at the end of the age, when the Jewish people shall return to is teshuva, return to Israel, to God, when the, even the church shall return to its roots, when we are to return to the book of Acts. These are the days of Teshuvah. Hmm. Tell me about the mystery mm. of the triangle. Okay, God is so awesome. How can you be so <laughs> filled with so many <laughs> mysteries? That's what no. I want to know. Look, I'm a Jew, and the Gentile believer is to provoke the Jew to jealousy, but this <laughs> Jewish believer is provoking me to jealousy. Wait a minute. I don't, I don't think that's biblical, Sid. I don't think that's biblical. I don't think that's biblical. So God chooses the least likely. So here's the thing. When, think about, think about. Yeah, I volunteer. Least likely. <laughs> <laughs> think about the redemption. Think, first of all, Passover, Passover. God brings redemption. How? He has them put the blood of the lamb on the beams of their doorpost. We know that. Where does he put them? On the top, on the side, on the other side. What does it form? It's, it's blood on the be blood of the lamb on beams. Put it together, it forms a triangle pointing up from man to from, from man to God. A triangle. But here's God is so awesome. Over a thousand years later, God answers on the same day, Passover, on beams of wood, he puts the blood of the lamb. Where? One here, one here, one here, a triangle from God to man. But here's the other thing, but God is so cosmic. What happens when you put it together, it forms a cosmic star of David? Wow. <laughs> Over the ages, thousands of years, only God could do that. Only God could do that. Wow. So on, on the cross, there was this line, yes, and then his feet were nailed yes. together, yes. so it was a perfect triangle. God is answering man, and together we've got the Star of David. Yeah, there's no answer. Tell me the, the, the mysteries to change our lives. Oh, there's so many, <laughs> but, but every, I think we could start, but, but every mystery really here is to change your life. There's a mission at the end of it, of every mystery, to apply to one's life. Um, I don't know, if, how much time do we have? <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. Uh, okay, one minute? You think we're two? Okay, all right, all right. All right. I wasn't doing the victory side. Right, I was just right. telling two minutes. All right, all right. So, okay, at the, okay, the, the, the teacher in the mysteries takes the disciple to a mountain. He says, you got to get to the top of the mountain. you got to get to, there's something on the top waiting. But he doesn't know which path to go on. And so when we're saying in our life, how do we know God's will for my life? I go, right, right, left, left. So, so he, he takes one, he tries it, but he fails. He ends up at the bottom of the mountain. The, the teacher says this, here's the answer. We're all heading to Jerusalem, a new Jerusalem. In order to go to Jerusalem, you had to make Aliyah. You have to go mm -hmm. up to Jerusalem, always. You can't go down, you have to go up. And the, by the way, the word Aliyah means that's it. go up. It means the Aliyah means wherever you are in the world, if you're a Jew, you're called back to Israel. And even if you're from the south of Israel, you're still, you're going up. And even if you're from the north of Israel and you go south, you're still going up. Because any Jew that goes to Israel is putting the earth right back in order. <laughs> and, so, and so every time, so we are, every born again believer is a spiritual Israelite. So that means we have to make a spiritual Aliyah. That means our life has to be an 
Aliyah. We're heading. So what it means is this. Every time, every day, you're going to have a choice every day to go with the spirit or go with the flesh, you're to go upward or go downward, go, go with love, go with, go with selfishness, go with the sin or reject the sin. Every day, every day, choose the higher step. Every day, choose the higher step. And even if you don't know which path to go on, you're going to get to the mountaintop. You're going to get to your destiny. You're going to intersect with the destiny of God, no matter what. And you're going to get to the exact spot in the center, exactly what God's will is. So you don't always have to know exactly how or what or which thing. If you always go upward, you will be guaranteed to find your destiny on top of the mountain. Okay. How would you like to understand the mystery of living from your future <laughs> Now, all the time, we'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Imagine if you discovered a treasure chest in which were hidden ancient mysteries, revelations from heaven, secrets of the ages, the answers to man's most enduring age-old questions, and the hidden keys that can transform your life to joy, success, and blessing. Jonathan Kahn has been given new heavenly keys, which will take you on a year-long journey of a day-by-day -day discovery of things few people have ever heard, the most important keys of spiritual truth, end-time revelation, and the secrets of overcoming, things that will help you experience the reality of God in your life every day. Call right now to get Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's exclusive offer, which includes his brand new book, The Book of Mysteries. Plus, receive his five-part audio CD set, The Album of Mysteries, exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $49. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9439. As you open up the Book of Mysteries, you will be transported on a journey through a desert to encounter a man known only as the Teacher, who will take you on an odyssey to mountaintops, caverns, encampments of tent dwellers, and oil-lit chambers of scrolls, ancient books, and mysterious vessels to open the mysteries of the age and your life. Each day, you will get a powerful divine revelation, a special mission that takes the revelation and applies it to your life, scripture references that help you meditate on and apply each of the 365 daily nuggets of life-changing revelation and activate them in your life, and so much more. Governor Mike Huckabee says, I was absolutely stunned. Pat Robertson said, the book is extraordinary. Sid Roth says, most of us only get one nugget while hearing an entire sermon on a Sunday morning. But Jonathan Kahn in his book gives you 365 one-page nuggets of revelation, one for each day of the year. Now you can begin this journey for yourself. Uncover the mysteries of God, the secrets of the ages, and the hidden keys to open the doors of a life of joy, victory, and success. Plus, when you call, you will also receive his exclusive five-part audio CD set, The Album of Mysteries. It is not available anywhere else. Sid asked Jonathan to expand the teaching on the most life-changing nuggets of revelation contained in his book. In this five-part audio CD teaching, The Album of Mysteries, some of these one page nuggets from the book had to be expanded to reveal the richness of the teaching and the powerful transformation it will bring to your life. Some of the things he covers in this five-part audio CD series are the mystery of the priesthood, the transference of the anointing and priesthood to Jesus, and now to you. Find out the importance of tapping into Jesus as your high priest, an advocate who makes the way for your every prayer to be heard and answered by your heavenly Father. Revelation of the face of God, which is now accessible and as you seek His face, you will receive blessings, provision, love, kindness, unlimited mercy, and compassion. Jonathan opens up revelations from the ancient biblical Hebrew wedding, the secret title of God, becoming one with God. Revealed are the supernatural events and encounters that totally transformed Jonathan's life and brought him to his appointed destiny. Jonathan reveals key mysteries on how to know, find, and fulfill the supernatural pattern, calling, purpose, vision, and and destiny of your life. Don't miss out on getting Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's exclusive offer, which includes his brand new book, The Book of Mysteries. Plus, receive his five-part audio CD set, The Album of Mysteries, exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $49. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9439. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9439. 
1999 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, once again, before we go off the air, I want to thank our broadcast partners, GB America and God TV, and I have the most supernatural news to report in 40 years. But I'm going to tell you contractually, I'm not allowed to say this until September 15th. That's why on September 15th, we are going to have another live event in which I'll reveal this news to you. Trust me, it is so prophetic, it is beyond my comprehension. And I've been involved in things that have been high in the Lord that are beyond my comprehension, but this is way beyond it. I'll be joined with a special guest, many of you are familiar with him, John Bevere. Uh, and what he's going to share is, in my opinion, the most important thing he has ever shared. That has nothing to do with what I'll be talking about. And then, in addition to John, I want Pat Robertson to talk about the significance of the prophecy I'm going to be talking about. Perry Stone is going to be talking about the significance of this. So don't miss it right here, September 15th, live. And don't forget, when we leave GB America and God TV, this program will continue on ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. So be sure to stay with us. Just log on to SidRoth.org slash ISN or download our free app on, uh, on any smartphone on any computer, you just go to the App Store, type in my name, Sid Roth, and a nice orange app, it's free, will appear, and you can see this uh, next Thursday, September 15th. And in fact, our network is on in high definition 24-7. Now, uh, Jonathan, I said before we uh, came back that you were going to explain something so profound, so important, how we can live from the future 24-7. Explain what you mean by that. <clears throat> yeah, this is one of the mysteries, I want people to know that, that, that we would not see in the English, it is there in the original language, and that is this. In the Hebrew, people don't realize there's really no past, present, and future. We think there is, but not really. They use certain things to mean that, but really in the Hebrew, there's no real past, present, and future. There's only two tenses, perfect and imperfect. Perfect means we take as the past because it's finished. Imperfect, it's not finished. Okay. So in the Bible, there are things talk when it talks, sometimes it talks about the future, things that have not happened, but it uses the past tense, as if, it, in other words, as if it's already done, yet it's happened. It says, it's, and we don't realize that in English. So the thing is that, that the Bible, it actually, I'll give me another one. You go to Isaiah 53, you'll find, it talks about Messiah's death. Right. But you'll, in the Hebrew, you'll find every single one, past, present, and future. It's an eternal event. It covers every moment of our lives. So the, the key here, since in God, it, what's perfect is what's finished. So it's to live, whatever you're trying, it's not, I'm trying to be victorious, you live from God's finished victory backwards. <laughs> you know, it says, Jesus said, Messiah said, it, on earth as it is in heaven. In, in other words, right. it's first, you gotta live not from, we, we're, we're linked to an earth to heaven life. The godly life is a heaven to earth life. You live from the heavenly. The heavenly is what's perfect and is what's coming. You live from the end. In other words, I'm not trying to be free of this thing. I'm living, for God already has it in the future. I, in the future, I'm gonna be perfect. I'm gonna be free. I'm starting from that because that is the perfect. But that, that would true. take faith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sid. We, we, need, we need that. Listen, what, what did Messiah say on the cross? It is finished. Mm. In Hebrew, that's perfect. That's perfect. So the key in that we're always struggling from the imperfect. I want to get to God. No, it's all from God. It's from the finish line. You don't run to, you start from the victory. You start from him. That's the whole point. Do you realize what peace you could have? Do you realize how the devil couldn't get you upset about anything? That's right. If you could comprehend this mystery. Speaking of mysteries, mm. tell me the mystery 
of the appointments of our days. <clears throat> well, you, we all know, we've re read the scripture, and this is this, another thing where, you, where it's the deep thing. In the, in the English, it says, teach us to number our days. We all know that, and, that's, and it means that, but it means more than that. In Hebrew, the word is monat. It doesn't just mean teach us to number our days. It also means teach us to appoint our days to ordain our days. You know, in, in, the, in the book of, in the book of, of, of uh, Jonah, you see it says, God appointed a fish, he appointed a worm, he appointed, well, we are to appoint our days that are yet to come. We can uh, ordain our days. And it's like your days are, you're not supposed to have your days come and whatever hits me, hits me and that's it. You are to ordain, appoint, anoint your future, your day, the days of your life for victory, for God, for glory, for growing, for breakthrough, you have to appoint them. Teach us to appoint our days before they happen. There is such a presence of God in this <laughs> studio right now. God is telling me people are being healed. I can tell you there are people with toe problems, T-O-E. If you will just stand up and smash your foot on the ground, you'll see that pain is totally gone. There are people with eye problems right now, weak eyes, astigmatism, floaters. They are gone in the name above your problems, Yeshua HaMashiach Shekinah. When we come back on the ISN network, Jonathan is going to reveal mysteries he's learned about the supernatural that will allow you these keys to operate the same way he does, the same way I do, the same way everyone in the Bible does. It's time for you to be normal. <laughs> normal as defined by the Bible, not normal as defined by tradition or religion. Be sure to get on that ISN app. It's free at the App Store, and when we come back, all heaven <laughs> is going to break loose. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, it's hard to believe, but at eight years of age, you make a decision. Yeah. I am Jonathan the atheist. Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> I, was, I was raised in the synagogue, and I heard about God and heard about the things of the Bible. But when I was eight years old, you know, I, the thing is, I didn't see the presence of God in the synagogue. I didn't see the reality of God in people's lives. So I said, there's no God. How do we know there's a God? So maybe there's one, maybe there's no God, maybe there's three gods. I don't know. So I became an atheist. I was known as the mm -hmm. atheist. And, my, and that lasted until I started losing faith in atheism. When I, how did you lose faith in it atheism? It didn't work. It didn't I don't work. even know how you can get faith in <laughs> It didn't. Well, they do, and it didn't I mean, work. atheism say, I know there's no God. That's, prove it to me. That, yeah, that, 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 takes a lot of, that takes a lot of faith to Dude, say they that. They say to believers, prove it to me. Yeah. I want atheists. Yeah. Prove it to me. It's too late for me, by the way, like the rabbis say. They say it's too late for me. I had an encounter with Jesus. Yeah. A man with an encounter trumps a man with anything else going in their apologetics. Yeah. It's too late for me. <laughs> I know. I know. I live my life for him. This is my only purpose for living. And I'll tell you what, I don't know any close second. Do you? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So I got to the point. So I said, this doesn't work. There's got to be a reason for this life. So when I was about 12, I started seeking. I started seeking the supernatural. I started seeking everything. So there's got to be more. I got every book I could from science, religion, Nostradamus, UFOs, everything. And one day I picked up a book. I thought it was a UFO book. And God tricked me because that book, that year they put out this other book to make it look like a UFO book. It was The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey, <laughs> which is all about, you know, all about, you know, the, the prophecies coming true today about Israel and all. That, that had, you didn't know from nothing, nothing back then, but nothing. it had to have some effect yeah, on you because that's part of your destiny. Big, big, big effect. And, and I'd already been, here's the thing. I was already in the, in the, in the supernatural books. I was already reading about Jesus. Everybody talked about Jesus. So, okay. So God opened me up. I said, wow. So I started, I said, it's coming true prophecy end time. So I started telling my friends about it. I wasn't saved, but I was leading them to the Lord. <laughs> I was preaching. I, I remember in high school, I, I preach class, I'm preaching the gospel and I'm not saved and they're getting saved. So <laughs> finally, finally I had a rock band, all of a sudden I had all, and so finally I realized 
I, wait, this is not good. If he comes back, I'm not right with him. So I said, Lord, I, I finally I knew, I, I, and I looked, by the way, I, we had an Old Testament, of course, Hebrew scriptures in our, I started looking, I started seeing in our home, it said that, that Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem. I thought that was Catholic. How did that get into our home? You know, you know that he's going <laughs> to die for our sins. That's in our home. So I believed in him in my head, but I wasn't living. And so I said, Lord, he, here's the thing. I know I, I should serve you, but I don't want to because I think, because I thought if you follow him, you, you give up everything good, you join a monastery, and that's the end of your life. So I made a deal with him. I said, Lord, if you give me a long life, I'll accept you when I'm on my deathbed. Well, that's very yeah. nice of you, John. It was very nice. Yeah, <laughs> except God is a lot better with negotiations than I am. So, so what happened is right after that, I almost got killed twice. Is that all? That's it. And the, second, and the second time, I'm in a Ford Pinto at night traveling to a train track, and the light is going on like it's, you know, there's no protection, like the train, like, like it's coming, but everybody's crossing on the other side, so well, maybe it's broken, so I said, let me go up close. So I go up, and I see a light to my left, and it doesn't look like it's moving. I was on the track. I didn't know it. I didn't know it. And at one point, I said, well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just too sick. Maybe, so I said, let me charge back up. But now the headlights are back of me. So I'm, but I thought, well, I backed up about a foot. I thought I'm fine, though. I was still in the path of the train. I'm waiting for the train to come. The train comes and plows into the Ford Pinto. It goes up like aluminum foil. And the only thing I could say at that point was to call out to God. So I called out to God. The car was destroyed, and I didn't get a scratch. That doesn't sound possible, Jonathan. I didn't get a scratch. The police were there, made the headlines. I got out, and I said, Lord, I, I said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, can we renegotiate? <laughs> now, that sounds possible. <laughs> Very Jewish. So I said, I said, okay, Lord, I said, I will, I'll accept you. Here's a new deal. I'll accept you just, just when, I, when I turn 20. I'll accept you. Just don't kill me until then. And so, and so on my 20th birthday, and my 20th birthday, I went up. I didn't know how to get saved. I went up a mountain. I remember he, Moses was on a mountain. Went up a mountain. Got to so, the top so of the mountain. So you knew somehow that Moses went up on a mountain. Elijah. So you just decide to go up on a mountain. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know how, Jew, okay. I didn't know how, you know, I, I was. I know you, know, you didn't know. So I, I'm a Jewish <laughs> too. I know you didn't know anything. So I, I, was, I went up, I found a rock, kneeled down on that rock, and I, on the top of the mountain, I gave my life to the Lord. That's how I came. It says, Jews demand signs, I needed a train. That is how I came. And my life changed from that moment on. But if it wasn't for that train, I wouldn't be saved here. Mm. On that mountain. Now, uh, but there was a mystery revealed 20 yeah. years later That's about right. that mountain. That's what right. I, that? I decided to come back to the mountain where I got saved. And, on my, and I was going to say to my birthday, so I got on my birthday. I went up at night. I had a talit on, had a shofar when we were going to blow it. I went up to the top, had a Bible and a flashlight, found the rock, had a great time with the Lord, reading, blowing, all that. The next day, I go to the service. and My great time is in a nice, air-conditioned, modern motel. <laughs> now, Sid, that doesn't make sense. You're, you, are, you are wild for this. You, you, come on, you got to be, I, I can see you on a mountain. Easy, easy. So, Good luck. So, so, so with air conditioning. So I, okay, so I, okay, so, air conditioning. So, so I went up to the top. So, I was, all right, so the next day, there's a woman waiting online. Um, and, and at the congregation, she says, I have a birthday present. I said, really? She bought a, a, a drawing from a store, and, it's, and I look at it. It's a drawing of a man on a mountain with a shawl blowing a trumpet. I said, that's weird. That was me last night. She said, really? I said, yeah, I went back to the mountain where I came to the Lord. She said, we should, we said which mountain? I said, I don't know the name of the mountain. She says, tell me. I tell her. She says, the woman says, I live at the bottom of the mountain. I said, really? I said, she said, do you know what that mountain is? I said, no. She said, that mountain is dedicated to Satan. I said, really? I said, well, I got saved on top of it. She, she, said, she said, well, that's where, they, that's where they do their stuff on top. I said, really? I said, well, I, I, I kneeled down on a rock. And she said, that rock's the altar. I said, well, you, you know, and, 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 you know, it's like, I said, well, that explains why my life has not been normal. It's been dramatic, you know. You know. But the thing is, the thing is, for the media, but the thing is, I remember that answer to mystery because I remember seeing words in the mountain, and it, it made no sense. It said, no Jew shall enter these sacred grounds. And I said, who wrote that? You know, Nazis? Who wrote that? Satan wrote it. For 2,000 years, he's been trying to stop the Jewish people to come from mm. their, to their sacred grounds. I said, too late, Satan. No, man, this Jew is in. I'm back in. And, and little did I know that the Lord was going to lead me up these cursed mountains to, to, to have, have warfare with the enemy from that time on. But it was all there at the beginning. I believe our destiny is already there from the beginning. And it was all there on that mountain. Waited 20 years. Did you hear that? Your destiny is already there. It's already there. Jonathan, now I met you many, many years ago at yes, your congregation, yes. but how did you get 
uh, to be the, the rabbi of Beth Israel congregation. I wasn't seeking anything. I mean, I mean except, except what happened was I, I, soon after the Lord, I was in college. I went to a little church and there was a woman who, was a pro, who had been a prostitute, a madam, and she was saved and she, was, and she calls me out prophetically out of that and she starts prophesying to me about a ministry and things that were going to happen that have happened now. She said it way back then when I was like, you know, almost... And, just... and by the way, some of you heard things from prophets way back then. I'm one of them. I'm one of them that heard things way back when, some 30 years ago. And I thought, with peanut brain, that was a false prophet. No, there's no time in eternity. And some of the things that I'll be talking about on the 15th of this month were prophesied, literally prophesied 30 years ago. I thought it wasn't God, but it was God waiting for me to get ready. That's what I believe, getting yeah. my act together. Yeah. You think, yeah. that, you yeah. think that's I, true? I believe that. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. It's not always that, that God isn't ready. It's that we're not ready. Yeah. God is always ready. <laughs> you know, and so, so I, was, I had to figure out what to do, but, but I had the calling to be a I knew I knew he called me to ministry. In the meantime, someone asked me, who we know, a mutual friend, Gary Selman, said, help me start this congregation. I said, okay, I'll help you, but I can only be here for a while because I'm going to have to leave for the ministry. Well, I, I ended up working with disabled children. I said, Lord, give me something you would do. So I, I helped them. Mm -hmm. I had a mission to New York City and all these things, the homeless and all that, and I taught the Bible. God started revealing stuff to me as I was teaching. And one day, I, the same guy says, listen, the guy who was leading it, it's a small outreach, about 30 people. He left. You got you to do this. We're asking you to. I said, I can't. This was just for the meantime. He said, well, maybe this is the ministry. Maybe it is. So I prayed. I turned on the radio, and actually a guy who we both know, he, he says, strangely, he's a Christian, he says, he says, a Kohen, Mm -hmm. must, must teach men the Word of God. And I'm saying, who talks about that on Christian radio? Call on. I said, and, and, other, and, and so I prayed. I said, Lord, I know we're not supposed to give you fleeces, but I'm giving you six fleeces, and you got to do it by the end of this month. <laughs> by the end of that month, everything I said, he did. Everything he said. So I said, okay, yes, yes. And, then, and it was a little small group, you know, but then it started doubling and tripling, and then we had no place to go, and a guy shows up one day, and, and we had no money. We had nothing. The church says, you got to find your own place. Guy shows up. He's an American Indian, and he says, you're the one. Now, I, I've had women say that, but never a man. He said, you're the one. And, and, and Have you ever thought about stand-up comedy? No. Okay, no. I'll just tease No. <laughs> and so he, he said, the Lord told me the Jew and Gentile have to come together. The Christian has to go. He says, and the Lord told this me. This a Native American Native American. You this? He, he lived in a trailer, and he said, here's a check, and he gave me a check for $150,000. And he was poor. And he said, the Lord told me to do it. And by that, we bought our first building. Then we outgrew that. Then we had this massive next building, and we couldn't afford it. And I said, and, and we, all the negotiation broke down. I finally, I said, you know what, Joshua, remember jo Joshua walked around the building, walked around <laughs> the Jericho seven times. I said, I got the board together. It was just around midnight. I said, we're going to do something silly, foolish, makes no sense. But we're going to walk around this building seven times. So we did in the middle of the night. And I said, this is the most foolish thing we did. The next morning, the realtor bangs on the door and says, you'll never believe it. The corporation said, change their mind. They're giving you the building. So never despise the foolish things of God. You know? Well, I had two Messianic Jewish rabbis. I still have two Messianic <laughs> Jewish rabbi friends. And everyone was kind of thinking, these two guys, they're never going to get married. This is one of them. They, both of them are married today. But you... <laughs> What? I mean, this is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Tell me the supernatural of your marriage. Uh, were, were you looking for a wife? Were no, you ready to get married? No. Well, no. What happened was, what happened was, you know, being a single leader, a lot of, you know, we had a lot of women who all had revelations from God that they were all to marry me. Yeah, my other friend had the same. <laughs> my other friend had the same situation. And I said, you know, unless unless he gives me the call of Solomon, I can't do that. So, so, so I said, so I, I, I got. <laughs> It took got, me a while to get it too. <laughs> I got I got so cautious about this, and then and then then at the same time I told you, I went to India, I came back. It was so dangerous. I said, Lord, maybe you don't want me to be married. So I said, All right, Lord, I'm completely fine now. From here on in, I am fine. You know, well, I'll never get married. We'll never say never because at that same time, see, something was happening in Brazil across the world. There was a shofar. There was a bronze shofar that a pastor had built to commemorate a prophecy or prophecies that were given to his daughter. There was a daughter across, uh, the daughter of the pastor, when she was about 13, 14, 15, people had prophesied over her, four different groups of people. They all said the same thing. They said, there's a man across the world. He is Jewish. He ministers around the world, sounds the shofar. He's of the tribe of Levi. 
and you are to be his wife, start preparing. So she starts reading about how, and she's actually has some Levite blood. And then the Levites help the priest, help the sons of Aaron. Right. So, so she's reading all. What a all perfect combination, a Levite and a Kohen. <laughs> uh, they, they work together for, to, uh, to put the temple together. <laughs> so, she, so she's reading, studying all about how the Levites help the priest, but then nothing happens. She says, well, just like you said, what was the prophecy? Was it real? She ends up in America. One of the prophecies said, and she, she, says, she says to the, her friend, says, take me to a Messianic congregation. I, I had it in Brazil. I, the, the person happened to be part of Beth Israel. They come there. One of the prophecies said, as soon as you see him, you're going to know it's him. So I'm walking around at the beginning. It's, you know, they, you wouldn't know I was anything there. And she sees me. She says, I know him. How do I know him? He's been to Brazil. And she's, the person says, no, he's never been to Brazil. I meet her at the end. She, she doesn't speak English. We have an interpreter. And I go home angry because I said, Lord, why did you bring this person? Because that would have been the one, <laughs> you know, because I just said no, and then you bring this one. So I prayed, and the Lord gave me peace, and we, 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 we started talking. She never told me the prophecy, never told me the prophecy. But then the Lord had me call to Brazil, and then her mother came to the meeting and told me about the prophecy, not knowing who I was, you know. So I, I ended up, we ended up seeing each yeah, other. Yeah, but you had heard all these prophecies. I mean, uh, did you know she was the one? Not, not, not until I, well, not until Say the I, women know. <laughs> Men don't always know. No, it takes long, <laughs> longer, yeah. Not until I heard that, I think. And then, and then we didn't speak, she didn't speak English. I didn't speak, I didn't speak Portuguese. Is that why you got along so well? <laughs> yes, no. no. <laughs> Someone she, told me no. you didn't have an argument for your entire first year of marriage. <laughs> no, 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 since then she's learned English. Okay. Oh, okay. So, 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 so we, I'm glad she learned yeah, English. The first do you we, speak much Portuguese? I, I, I learned, Poquita. when I met her, I learned two sentences. I can still do the, the two sentences. So, <laughs> so, so we, we communicated by a laptop. Everywhere we went, I typed in what I wanted to say, <laughs> pressed the button, translation, read it back to her in Portuguese. She'd do the same in English and sign language. So finally, on the third year, we told the congregation, the fourth year, I proposed on the same mountain where I came to the Lord on the same rock. And then the fifth year, we got married. Now, the day that we got married, it, we didn't plan it, was, a, a, was the night of the Sabbath. Well, uh, you know, there's a Torah reading every, every Sabbath. You know that, appointed for ages. The portion, the portion was God giving the Levites to the sons of Aaron to help them in their ministry. That's the day we came together. And the thing is... I the Levites to the Kohen. To the Kohenim, the priests. <laughs> and I found, out, I found out later on, I realized it, you know, I came to the Lord, said... Um, when I turned 20. She met me when she turned 20. And when I was born again, she was born, and when I was born again, and they gave her the name Renata, which means born again. <laughs> so it was like, you know, God is perfect in all his ways. I want you to tell me my favorite mystery, and that is the mystery of cosmic love. Okay. <clears throat> well, here's the thing, you know, what is love? You know, love is when you join yourself to another, you, you put yourself in the place of another. You put yourself in their heart, in their shoes, and you put yourself in their place. The Bible says God is love. So if God is love, what is going to be the greatest manifestation of love we could ever see or ever exist? That God himself would put himself in our place, in our shoes, in our cross, in our judgment, God would come down to us. What is love is you join yourself and become so one that you can't be separated. That is the mystery of really of everything. And the word, you know, we talked about the mystery of the bride and groom. What is the word, you know, in Hebrew, the word for a groom is chatan. What is chatan? God is the chatan. chatan. What does chatan mean? Chatan means the one who joins himself to you. <laughs> so what is it? You know, we think, oh God, you know, God, hear me, hear me, hear me. God is the, we're not the ones who came up with being saved. God wants to be one with us more than we do. God is the one who wants to join every part of him to every part of us. That's why he joined himself to our sins. There's no part of us that God will not join himself to. So the thing is to, the thing is to take every part of our life and let God become one with it, come down. He's the chatan. We're the bride. And you know, by the way, you know what the word bride means in Hebrew? Kala. It means the perfect one. Why? Not because, because what bride doesn't look perfect in the eyes of the bridegroom? <laughs> so, right. God, so, so where do you, God's, God's saying, open up your heart, open up your life. Do not, don't hold anything from me. I'm the chatan. I'm your bridegroom. I, I will become one with everything. You'll never be alone. You will never, hear me, you will never, listen to me, you will never be alone. If God is for you, who can be against you? 
I want to pray a supernatural prayer for you and God to be one. You are like the bride and God is like mm. the bridegroom. Mm. And the two shall become one. It's important mm. to mean this prayer to the best of your ability. It's important to speak it no matter where you are out loud. There's power in the spoken word. Repeat this prayer out loud after me. Dear God, Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Against you. Against you. And you alone have I sinned. You alone have I sinned. And I'm so sorry. And I'm so sorry. I believe. I believe. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Doesn't just cover my sins. Doesn't just cover my sins. But washes them away. Washes them away. And you say, and you say, you have no remembrance of them anymore. You have no remembrance of them anymore. And now that I am clean, and now that I am clean, good. I ask Jesus the Messiah. I ask Jesus the Messiah to be my Lord. To be my Lord. To come inside of me. To come inside of me. And be one with me. And be one with me. It's so good to be clean. It's so good to be clean. It's so good to have this new beginning. It's so good to have this new beginning. I'm not looking back anymore. I'm not looking back anymore. I'm living from the future. I'm living from the future. I'm walking in supernatural peace. I'm walking in supernatural peace. And I want everyone everywhere. I want everyone everywhere. To experience this wonderful God. To experience this wonderful God. Amen. Amen. Now, I read in the Torah that literally God would seal people when a particular prayer was recited over the people of Israel. Now, it takes a Kohen to really seal this. I happen to have someone from the priestly line right here with me. Jonathan? Would you, people have written in thousands of prayer requests mm. for us to pray, mm. and they are believing God. Yes. I believe that as you blow the shofar, you will cause the satanic spirits of infirmity and financial problems and marital problems and fear to scatter let God arise mm. and the enemies are going to scatter, then I want you to pray the Aaronic benediction, mm -hmm. the same one that Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, prayed mm -hmm. over the Jewish people. And what does it say in the Torah God would do if he would pray this special prayer? Place his name upon them and bless them. Bless them. Pray. Yeah. Do you want the, the Aaronic yes. blessing first? Okay. Blow the shofar and then okay. the Aaronic blessing. Amen. Now the blessing in the language of the Bible, God says, I will place my name upon you for all his children. Via 
Hashem Lecha Shab Lo The Lord said this prayer should be recited over the Jewish people and his name would be sealed on them. That was looking towards the coming of the Messiah. But I want to pray this prayer from the viewpoint of the Messiah has already come. I want to pray this prayer, this supernatural prayer, from the future. Are you ready to receive? The Lord has already blessed you. The Lord has already smiled upon you. The Lord has already gifted you. Just open yourself up to his gifts. The Lord has already prospered you. The Lord has already healed you. The Lord has already given you his shalom, his peace. In the name of the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach Tzikenu, Jesus the Messiah, our righteousness. I'll tell you what, Jonathan, one more time. Okay. Blow that shofar. Blow that shofar from the future right now. From the future. <laughs> Without, I'll tell you what, without faith, we can't please God. But this has been so rich. I know, I'm telling you something. When you tune in to ISN, it's Supernatural Network, on the 15th, you are going to hear something that if you've never danced before, you're going to be dancing in your living room. You're going to be, you are going to be so excited that you won't have time to worry about anything because Jesus came to me in a dream and he said, I'm coming back soon. I'm coming three times. I'm coming back soon. I'm coming back soon. Imagine if you discovered a treasure chest in which were hidden ancient mysteries, revelations from heaven, secrets of the ages, the answers to man's most enduring age-old questions, and the hidden keys that can transform your life to joy, success, and blessing. Jonathan Kahn has been given new heavenly keys, which will take you on a year-long journey of a day-by-day -day discovery of things few people have ever heard, the most important keys of spiritual truth, end-time revelation, and the secrets of overcoming, things that will help you experience the reality of God in your life every day. Call right now to get Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's exclusive offer, which includes his brand new book, The Book of Mysteries. Plus, receive his five-part audio CD set, The Album of Mysteries, exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $49. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9439. As you open up the Book of Mysteries, you will be transported on a journey through a desert to encounter a man known only as the Teacher, who will take you on an odyssey to mountaintops, caverns, encampments of tent dwellers, and oil-lit chambers of scrolls, ancient books, and mysterious vessels to open the mysteries of the age and your life. Each day, you will get a powerful divine revelation, a special mission that takes the revelation and applies it to your life, scripture references that help you meditate on and apply each of the 365 daily nuggets of life-changing revelation and activate them in your life, and so much more. 
Governor Mike Huckabee says, I was absolutely stunned. Pat Robertson said, the book is extraordinary. Sid Roth says, most of us only get one nugget while hearing an entire sermon on a Sunday morning. But Jonathan Kahn in his book gives you 365 one-page nuggets of revelation, one for each day of the year. Now you can begin this journey for yourself. Uncover the mysteries of God, the secrets of the ages, and the hidden keys to open the doors of a life of joy, victory, and success. Plus, when you call, you will also receive his exclusive five-part audio CD set, The Album of Mysteries. It is not available anywhere else. Sid asked Jonathan to expand the teaching on the most life-changing nuggets of revelation contained in his book. In this five-part audio CD teaching, The Album of Mysteries, some of these one page nuggets from the book had to be expanded to reveal the richness of the teaching and the powerful transformation it will bring to your life. Some of the things he covers in this five-part audio CD series are the mystery of the priesthood, the transference of the anointing and priesthood to Jesus, and now to you. Find out the importance of tapping into Jesus as your high priest, an advocate who makes the way for your every prayer to be heard and answered by your heavenly Father. Revelation of the face of God, which is now accessible and